Contender regime boxing checking back in with y'all, man. What's good? So there's been some rumors about Javante Tank Davis and his upcoming fight date and opponent. I'm hearing um, a March time frame, end of the month in March. They're talking about Tank Davis is, um, you know, coming back and, you know, going to um, be pretty much the first card, the first official card that the PBC and Al Heyman puts on on Amazon Prime. So that's going to be pretty dope, man. Uh, what better fighter to, you know, if you have Tank Davis in your stable, what better fighter to bring out first as the representation of your company, your brand, the fighters that you have on your stable um, to present to Amazon and, and their um, customer base, you know, and then, of course, the new people that you're bringing in as well. So I think that's a good look for the PBC and uh, for Amazon. And um, there's been a lot of rumors about who Tank Davis is going to fight next. Right. And I also want to talk about, um, you know, the truth behind the pay-per-view star power, what that's what that should look like going forward based off of people's expectations and what we've seen here recently in 2023. So um, as far as Tank Davis and, and uh, potential opponents, man, I've been hearing names like Frank Martin thrown around, uh, Rayo Valenzuela. Uh, his name has been thrown around. Isak Pitbull, uh, Pitbull Cruz for the rematch. That's been thrown around. Nobody knows what's really going to happen for real. Um, you know, of course, we know we're not getting a fight that we actually want to see, which is Tank Davis versus Devin Haney, um, given the fact that, you know, uh, Tank Davis and his team, they posture and they say, hey, man, look, you know, <laughs> You know, you got to do this and do that to get a fight with us. Uh, you know, it ain't about legacy with us. It ain't about the belts. And apparently it ain't about money because the Saudi Arabian uh, representatives want to actually make the fight. And they're willing to give Tank his asking price. But apparently he needs two Ferraris and some more other shit to even consider the fight. So that's too much to go through. He he don't He don't want that right now. You dig what I'm saying? So... Those other guys that are affiliated with PBC and or fit the bill for the type of matchmaking that Tank Davis and his team are used to putting on in the past. You dig what I'm saying? So um, with that being said, his next opponent is going to have a big impact on potential pay-per-view sales. Now, let's talk about how everybody says that Tank Davis... Um, after defeating Ryan Garcia, who carried his own weight from a popularity perspective, right, and brought a lot of uh, viewership and fanfare to the fight with he and Tank Davis, um, even myself giving Tank Davis the, the title of uh, face of boxing because I think that's what he could potentially be um, if I had to choose between Canelo Alvarez and Tank Davis, I would want Tank Davis to be the face of boxing. That's just my personal preference. But the the proof is in the numbers and the proof is in the consistency for who is actually the face of boxing. If we even have one at this time, a true face of boxing like Floyd Mayweather. We don't we, we don't have that. We don't have a Floyd Mayweather or a Sugar Ray Leonard or a Mike Tyson. We don't have that if we keep it in a hundred. But these guys that we're putting in that position, like a Canelo Alvarez or a Tank Davis, these guys are some of the closest things that could fit that bill. You dig what I'm saying? But they not that if we keeping it all the way real. Let's talk about it. Javante Tank Davis, before fighting Ryan Garcia, he was doing the same numbers that Earl Spence was doing, like 200K pay-per-view, like 250,000. Um, Earl did like... With Mikey, he did upwards to 300,000. With Sean Porter, he did upwards to 300,000. These are good fighters, but these are not big names. Now, these fighters that Earl Spence was fighting are on a higher level when it comes to skill and ability and threat that the guys that Tank Davis fighting, right? Tank Davis fighting Leo Santa Cruz 
in a pandemic, what he do like um, two hundred something like that. I know he did a nice gate for the pandemic, a nice live gate. Uh, Earl also did a nice live gate with Danny Garcia during the pandemic. Um, and the reason I'm throwing out Earl Spence because I'm I'm giving you we need numbers to compare these numbers to, right? So Tank Davis he fought Hector Garcia. Um, he fought uh, Isak Pit by Pitbull Cruz. I don't know why I keep fucking his name up. Isak Pitbull Cruz. They he fought these guys before Ryan Garcia. Fought Roly Romero before Ryan Garcia. These pay per views all did anywhere between a hundred thousand and three hundred thousand pay per view buys. The the Pitbull Cruz fight didn't do well on pay per view at all, right? But then he fights Ryan Garcia. And does a million pay-per-view buys. Big shit. Now you the face of boxing. That's what everybody's saying. Now you this big pay-per-view star. You the, you the A-side to everybody. You hold all this way. You command and demand all of this uh, viewership and fanfare and, and monetary value, right? Based off of what you did with Ryan Garcia. Now, what people seem to forget is that there was another person that participated which is Ryan Garcia, right? Now, the point I'm making going forward to his next fight, there's a lot of pressure on him to perform numbers-wise with the pay-per-view, with the live gate, with all of that shit, right? Because if he's supposed to be, you know, this bigger-than-life character in the sport of boxing, all off of one fight that he did with another guy who helped out, because before you fought Ryan Garcia, you wasn't doing nowhere near them numbers. So now... All of these guys who pushing this narrative saying that Tank Davis, you know, he's so big and so, you know, popular that he don't have to fight legacy fights. He don't have to make the fans that the fights uh, make the fights that the fans want to see. He don't have to pursue, you know, the big name, the high level guys that are a potential threat to beat him. He don't have to entertain those fights because he's so bigger than life now. You fight Frank Martin, y'all think that fight doing a million on pay-per-view? Y'all think that fight going to break live gate records? You fight Pitbull in a, in a rematch, is that doing a million? The first one didn't do good. Ryo, you fight him, a dude who got multiple losses just like Pitbull Cruz, you, that shit going to do a million? I don't think so. So for all these people that are saying, well, why fight Devin Haney? Why go to Saudi Arabia and fight Devin Haney when I can fight over here? I made thirty million in my last fight. Is Tank Davis gonna make thirty million fighting any of them dudes I just named? Hell no. That's the truth of the matter. It's a lot of pressure on Tank Davis to perform without the likes of a Ryan Garcia or Devin Haney. You know what I'm saying? Or a Shakur Stevenson or uh Teofimo Lopez or somebody like that. Even though those those names aren't guaranteed to net you a million pay-per-view buys or anything of that nature, but the whole point of them saying that why fight Devin when I just made, you know, 30 million in Vegas with Ryan, well, if you don't fight Devin, anybody else that you fight, you're not finna make 30 million. And you're not finna sell a million pay-per-views. But maybe he does. I'm rooting for him. I hope he does. Because this shows that he really is that guy that people are saying that he is. That, you know, he is the face of boxing. So, this is going to prove if you really that. Because if you sell a million pay-per-views right after you fought Ryan Garcia and you do that with somebody else, okay, then you got staying power. That is real now. It's tangible. But... If you go back to doing the same numbers that you've been doing or way less than what you did with Ryan Garcia before you fought Ryan, then that lets you know that it takes two to tango, which means you need to be trying to fight a Devin Haney. You need to be trying to go for the gusto and go get that bag that Saudi got because obviously, like Bill Haney said, you know, we, we, we talked to you about the $20 million. The Saudis, they got a big bag for you. You said, you know, you can't talk to me, talk to Al. 
Well, Tank Davis still ain't putting nothing on the table for Devin Haney. He ain't putting nothing on the table for none of the guys that we want to see him fight. So if you're not fighting them, then these people that you about to fight, you can't use the excuse that I made 30 million. Why would I, you know, take 20 or why would I, you know, try to fight, do everything in my power to fight this guy when I'm making 30 million you know, as the face of boxing. But you did that with one fighter, Ryan Garcia. Can you do that shit again? Can you do that shit in your next fight? If not, then all that shit means nothing. All this posturing means nothing. If you're not doing that shit without Devin Haney or without Ryan Garcia. You dig what I'm saying? So, Tank Davis need to be able to command $20 million in this next fight. 20 million or more, 30 million, like, because that's the that's the standard that y'all said. Every time we bring up Devin Haney and Tank Davis and the Saudis offering him a bag, y'all say, well, he he made 30 million. We'll do it again without Ryan Garcia. That's the truth of the matter. You know what I'm saying? The truth behind Tank Davis's star power is gonna show with his next opponent and how they perform on pay-per-view. Y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comments, man. Do y'all think that there's anybody that any of those dudes that I named, Frank Martin, Ryo, Pitbull, that Tank Davis is going to sell a million pay-per-views and he's going to make $30 million? Because the reason he, they saying that he shouldn't fight Dev is because, you know, he's doing these numbers by himself. So, let's see. Y'all let me know what y'all think, man. Contender Regime Boxing. I'll holler at y'all, boys, man.